Okay, hi, how's it going? Um, so, in today's video, we are going to use PyOpenGL. We're going to work with stencil buffers, and we're going to use that to create an outlining effect around um, our monkey object. So, I did write a script for this video, and then I just trashed it because it's been a while since I've been through this code base, and there were so many just little things that I had to uh, tweak. Um, but anyway, and just roast myself for a second, this kind of series of code needs a full do-over. Um, I've learned a lot since I started the series, and um, it needs to be improved. But if that didn't put you off, let's step into it. So I'm starting from the original, uh, from the code that I had in the Shadows episode. So. We'll do this in a kind of backwards way, and that is we'll start with the shaders and go from there. As you can see here, it's about the simplest shader you can write. So we are going to take in the, you know, the standard transformation stack because we want this to be, we want this pixel to be out there in the world in 3D. Um, but that's pretty much all we do with it. Then in the fragment shader, we are more or less just going to take in a uniform, a color, and just put that on the screen. Yeah, so remember, um, the reason I'm doing this is because of the bloom. Um, we've got our, basically got two, two color outputs. Um, the bright color is anything which gets blurred, but we, well, maybe we do want the, the outline to be blurred, but who cares, it's fine. All right, so great. Again, nothing too out of the, out of the ordinary here. So we'll just go back to the, config and we will take that good um, and at this stage here where we load in all the projection matrices we'll load that into the outline shader as well good okay great so no problem there, that shader should be loaded in and ready to go. Just a note here, we're going to be using a stencil buffer, and I think this shouldn't make a difference for us, because we are using our own custom frame buffer. However, if you are not using a custom frame buffer and you're just using Pygame's default frame buffer, you do need to create that. And basically the way we do that is we go... Just declare that we are using 8 bits in our stencil buffer and that will be automatically created by Py, by Pygame. Now we don't need that in this case for our custom frame buffer but I will put that in there because it is important. Okay so the rest of this is fine. I'm just going through it. Yep, yep, great. Okay so now let's go to our um, game app going to set a few things. Okay, so just a few 
just a few notes here. Um, this is how we would kind of set things up in general. So first of all, we enable our um, stencil test. Then we have a stencil mask. Okay, so we've got eight bits or one byte of information, which means we can take in anything from zero to 255. And the stencil mask is a value which is bitwise anded with the input. I think, geez, I think by default it is cleared to all zeros, the stencil buffer, and then ones are passed in on each fragment when something passes. Test, anyway. So think of a stencil mask of 255, think of it like writing ones to the stencil buffer on each fragment. Um, the next thing we have is we have, um, and this, I'm really just putting this in as a demo. I'm actually gonna reset these parameters later on. But, um, so here's what we've got. We're setting the stencil function, which is used in tests. Now the parameters are the function which is being used, the reference, so the function will always be a comparison function, comparing to a reference, and with some mask, and what happens is the reference value is anded with the mask, or something like that. So for instance, let's say we want the stencil test to pass when we are equal to the value one ended with 255 and this is treating one as 255 anyway for instance for instance um, some other things if we want to just test that our stencil buffer is working it's a great idea just to set it to GL never and make sure that like nothing is drawn because it should always fail the stencil test. The opposite to that is GL always. And then if we want to get creative, you know, we've got GL less, GL greater. Okay, so I'll just leave that there as demonstration. Um, and then the next thing we have is Uh, the stencil operation. So this is saying after the fragment tests have run, how do we update the stencil buffer? Now, there's a bunch of different operations, or different cases for this. Uh, the first case, straight up fail, is what do we do to the stencil buffer if the stencil test fails? Okay, um, and the depth test passes. Then we have Z fail, so that is the stencil test um, passes, but the depth test fails. And then, actually this, uh, sorry, I'm messing this up. I believe it's actually the first one is if both fail, then if the um, depth test fails, but stencil passes, and then if the stencil passes, but the depth test fails. But in either way, in either case, we'll just keep it at its default, which is GL keep. In other words, do not change the currently written stencil value. Um, just keep it as it is, no matter which tests pass or fail. And then I guess if the test passes, then the buffer's updated properly. But anyway, so we've got that, okay. So we can close this down. That's all fine. Right, now this stuff here is starting to bother me a little bit. Well, not this specifically, but this render stuff. So I'm actually going to split this into two versions and I'm going to hard code this. So what we've got is I'm going to make a function for rendering the light map. Okay, so I'll just go through this. Yep, 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 that's fine. 
render everything. Now when we draw these objects, we're going to pass in our light map shader. And we don't render the smoke. Okay, great. So that's good, that's the light render function. So then in the main loop, we go self.render scene. Let's not do that, we'll just go self. render. This just simplifies some of the working out later on. Um, so then render scene is actually the proper, the proper scene rendering. So let me go through this. Yeah, I'm just gonna get it working first. So what I'll do is I'll just pass this in. Okay, so none is just the, the shortcut for just like do a standard render. Let's just run that and check that it's working. That's not a good start. <laughs> ah, of course, of course, because I, I prob probably should reset my sen stencil stuff. So let me just go up here. Just, just disable that. Ah, oh, but side note, also what we should be doing up here. Yep, when we clear the buffer and so the color and the buffer, we should also um, the stencil buffer that's possibly what's going off but anyway okay great so as we can see everything is working we have shadows etc that is nice now the goal is to put an outline around this monkey so what we're going to do is first of all draw over the stencil buffer you know, everything is zeros. So if there's a zero, that's good and we can draw properly. Um, then, okay, so we're gonna draw the monkey, then we're gonna draw another copy of the monkey which is scaled a little bit larger and is a bright color. And then we're going to, when we draw the monkey, write to the stencil buffer and say all these, you know, all these fragments, all these pixels where the monkey was drawn mark that on the stencil buffer so that when we then go to draw the outline it will not be accepted on those pixels which the monkey has been drawn to if that makes sense so and then i'm going to change this so i'm going to add in a few parameters um, a boolean as to whether the object will be outlined and a numpy array which stores the color that we want to use for the outline so I'll go green and we're also going to need okay uh, and side note then, okay, this is, like I said, there's a lot of little things that I need to check here. So in theory, this will work. I'll update this in a second. Um, let's go to the, uh, the player update. So the player update will pass in the view transform. So we need to send that to the outline shader as well. Okay. Great. 
Great, great, great. Okay, so now we'll go to the monkey object. We can leave all of this. Wonder if I can wonder if I can get away with this. Uh, we'll go. Um, okay. Cool. So we'll go. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, in the case where there's no outline, then we just go and draw things as normal. In the case where there is an outline, then what, we, what do we do? So we set things up so we are writing to the writing to the stencil buffer, then we uh, okay, no, this is annoying. Okay, I'm gonna redo it. So we're gonna pass those parameters on to going to pass those parameters on to the um, the model drawer and that will handle it and we'll go down to the ground because that's also using a model and we'll say just for now pass some dummy parameters along just to say that yep we are not outlining the ground okay so you can see how much fun this is so now we'll go to the view we'll go to the model renderer now we'll do this okay so this is position So the reason I had to pass it in here is because um, it's setting up the model transform. We want to put the scale in the model transform. So it's just a little easier to do that. Let me just double check. Yep, position and then ground. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, so this will create the, basically draw the standard model. Now we'll draw another copy of the model. So let me just, okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna check, when we drew this originally, we set pixels to one. Now we want this outline to draw on the pixels which are not one. Actually, let's leave it, let's leave it for now. Okay, cool. So we're just stacking these in. Um, we scale it up first, then we shift it to its position. Great. Okay. Now uh, what we need to do is we need to load that in. Um, 
So the first time we use self.shader, that's a standard 3D textured shader. The second time we use the shader which has been passed in here, which will be the outline shader. So we load that in and then we load in the color as well. Okay, <laughs> fingers crossed. So we'll go and run this. Right, of course, because in the light render, when we draw the monkey, then we need to also do those parameters. So you need to say false, don't outline it. And it really doesn't matter there. Okay, good. Okay, excellent. So what we've got is we can kind of see there's the original model and the green bit is scaled up. So now we want to incorporate the stencil test to make sure that we are not, um, you know what I mean. So all the pixels where the model was drawn, we mark that on the stencil which we've kind of already done, we just need to update the test. So we go down here and what we want to test is basically the stencil value that we want to draw to, the pixel we want to draw to, is its fragment not equal to one. Okay, because we'll have zeros everywhere except where we drew the model. Um, that's not great. Okay, so not entirely sure why this works. I have to think more into that. Um, but what we also need to do is set um, the functions to keep, keep, replace. Huh. I guess, hmm, I guess what that means is, well, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, weird, but hey, there it is. Okay, so as you can see, we're really only scratching the surface with these stencil buffers. And it's really scratching a scratch on the surface. So here we can see the, um, the monkey object here is drawn and then those um, fragments are flagged to say, yep, it's been drawn to and then we can draw the outline pretty much everywhere where we haven't drawn. You know what I mean. Okay, that's cool. All right, so, um, yeah, hope you had fun. And um, yeah, keep playing around with stencil buffers, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.